Hi, I'm Mark Andrews. I'm a Strategic Lead for Health and Safety for the Police Federation of England and Wales. There has been a lot of research carried out in relation to the impact shift working has on health. Fatigue is always one area which is highlighted due to the disruption of our sleep patterns. It is too simplistic to think of fatigue as merely being overtired. The health and safety points to fatigue as being a significant risk due to the detriment to our physical and mental performance. They point to areas such as stress within the workplace, as well as disruption to the internal clock as being reasons for officers and our employees being impacted on fatigue. As police officers, we need to make sound and sensible decisions based on the national decision-making model. Anything which lessens our ability to achieve this can have a significant consequence to those people we come into contact with, as well as the officers themselves, if they get it wrong. Being fatigued leads to a reduction in that decision-making ability and impacts on our cognitive processing. It can lead to memory loss and our ability to recall facts. It can increase risk-taking and increase errors of judgment. It can also impact on our ability to communicate effectively and can see an increase in irritability and a decrease in civility. Officers report a decline in performance and their ability to manage stress within the workplace. All of these factors can lead to an increase in performance and conduct procedures. And more importantly, or at least equally importantly, a decline in the service we offer to the public. It must be noted that disturbance to our sleep patterns is not the only reason why officers become fatigued. And if we are truly to target it and to make a change, we must recognise the other factors such as the quality of sleep officers are getting on the rest days. Sleep disorders need to be taken seriously by the workforce and measures put in place to support those officers with a sleep disorder. Officers need to be given breaks within their, their work day and facilities to have those breaks in comfort. Workloads and responsibilities have increased significantly over the years. Officers are expected to do more with less, and this leads, leads to additional workplace stress. The pressures of a digital life cannot be discarded. The officers are never away from work now. They have mobile phones which are connected to their workplace emails, as they had, and they have laptops. Officers need to be reminded to leave these items at home and turn them off. External pressures such as changes to the household cannot be discounted by managers. Officers go through different phases in their life and this needs to be considered. For example, new parents, carers, this will change the risk to them in relation to fatigue. Being fatigued not only impacts on the emotional and mental state of officers. Many will recognise signs such as nausea and stomach complaints or being off more with colds and flus when they are fatigued. More worryingly, however, is the link between shift working and chronic ill health, such as heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and some forms of cancer. As a health and safety lead for the Federation, I want to ensure that forces recognise fatigue as a significant risk. Our fatigue initiative is broken down into three distinct areas. The first will show the signs and symptoms of fatigue, what can happen if it is left unchecked, and give tips. That will hopefully raise the profile and remove the stigma from fatigue. The second area will remind forces of their moral and legal obligations around managing fatigue. And finally, the third will be about the individual's responsibility so that they can put measures in place to make changes in their lives so that they will lessen the impact of fatigue. Ultimately, we want to give enough information to all so that we can look after each other, recognise signs and put measures in place to support ourselves in the workplace. Moving forward, PFEW will work with forces so that they are doing all they can to reduce the risk of fatigue. 
we will be asking them to have suitable and sufficient risk assessments in place and not merely to have pro prescriptive reduction in hours. What we are asking for is not an exhaustive list. In fact, a lot of it is enshrined by law. Such things as ensuring that working time directives are adhered to and police regulations are followed, having facilities in place for comfortable rest breaks, and ensuring workloads are managed appropriately. These are not big asks. Hopefully you will find your fatigue initiative information useful and remember the Federation are always there to help you. Thank you.